Hello again. I talked yesterday about the decolonisation of science, which is proceeding apace at Sheffield University. I thought that viewers might find it interesting to see how this enterprise is targeting their children and grandchildren. When I spoke the other day about a book on anti-racism, which I found in the children's section of the local library, a few people said that children don't read library books anyway, so it doesn't really matter what books are on the shelves there. All the local schools, though, bring their children to this library and encourage them to take out books. Sometimes teachers will choose books for the children themselves, which they feel might be relevant to the child. Then, too, the teachers take out books and use them for work in the classroom. So I do think that it matters what books are stocked in the library. This one is a book about decolonising science, which is aimed not at university students, but at children of 11 years of age. You will see that it is headed Black Stories Matter, um, a play on the words of the Black Lives Matter movement. This was published last year in the wake of the Black Lives Matter riots and disorder. I draw attention to the title of the book so we know what it is supposedly about. It is called Groundbreaking Scientists and the subtitle is Black Scientific Icons Who Changed the World. Have we got that clear? This book is about scientists, black scientists, ones whose work has changed the world. Let's open it up and see what we've got here. Well, the first person we see is, rather surprisingly, Mary Seacole. Was she a scientist? She was not. She ran a restaurant. It is odd to find her in a book about scientific icons who changed the world, but let's see what it says about her here. In the autumn of 1854, Mary travelled from Jamaica to London to offer her services as an experienced nurse. She was turned down by everyone, the War Office, the British Army, and by an assistant of Florence Nightingale, who was interviewing women who wanted to become part of Florence's nursing team. Many women were turned down because they lacked nursing skills or hospital experience, but Mary clearly had both. This set her to thinking that maybe her nursing skills were being rejected because of the colour of her skin. This is all completely untrue, of course. Mary Seacole was not turned down by anybody at all. Those wishing to be nurses going to the Crimea as part of the official effort, were required to apply in writing and give references. This was a normal way of getting a job then, just as it is indeed today. Seacole did not make a written application and so was not considered for the job of nurse. It's as simple as that. She was not turned down. She did not apply. The colour of her skin had no bearing at all on this. The author is trying to introduce racism into the story, although it has nothing at all to do with the case. We see further that Seacole decided to fund her own trip to the battlefields and then set off on her mission of compassion. Hmm. This was not a mission of compassion at all. She was going to the Crimea to open a restaurant, for goodness sake. Finally, here is a nice picture of her nursing a soldier as she lays in bed. This never happened at all. It's a complete figment of imagination. So much for the first scientist who changed the world. Who else have we got here? Oh yes. Here we are. Bessie Coleman. What kind of scientist was she? Actually, she was a manicurist in a barber shop. She decided to take flying lessons and then gave aerobatic displays before killing herself in a plane crash in the 1920s. All well and good, but how did she change the world? In what possible sense was she a scientist? And so it goes on. There's Philip Emiagwali. He's a Nigerian who claims to be the father of the internet. You can see him featured all over the place during Black History Month. 
His various claims have been com comprehensively debunked elsewhere, not least on Wikipedia. I give a link to the court case in which Michigan University refused to award him a PhD because his work was hopeless. He took them to court because he said they were being racist by expecting him to complete his dissertation to the same standard as everybody else. Then we have Daniel Hale Williams, who it is claimed was the first person in the world to carry out open heart surgery. This is nonsense. The kind of operation he carried out had been undertaken almost a century earlier. He was actually the first black person to do such a thing. This is the problem with decolonising science and trying to emphasise the role of black people in science. You end up talking about shopkeepers and people doing aerobatics to entertain the crowds at circuses. The truth is that scientific research is not something which black people have made much of a contribution to, ever. Whether you are talking about quantum physics, computers, evolution, chemistry, medicine or anything else, the reason that we only see white scientists has nothing at all to do with racism or Eurocentrism. It is because it is Europeans and Americans who are actually doing the science. <laughs>